Hello, everyone, and welcome to Financial Foreplay. Today, we're going to be talking about the most important topic of all from the perspective of financial health, and, and that is, of course, cash flow. And thankfully, we're going to be doing it financial foreplay style. So I promise I'm not going to bore you guys with a bunch of crazy calculations and numbers. We're going to be talking about it in a highly visual and engaging way. And I promise that even if you came to this episode today and you don't understand anything to do with cash flow. It scares you. Um, you're overwhelmed. It doesn't matter. I promise you're going to leave with the basic fundamentals and you're going to be able to ask better questions and make better decisions and get better results, not just in your business, but also in your personal financial situation as well. Before we get going though, however, what I want to do is I want to give a special shout out to some great reviews that have been left for the podcast. And I just want to say thank you to all the listeners for your amazing feedback. But I just want to highlight a couple of ones um, and share with you and just say thank you. From Suzanne Camille, fantastic information, some great information that makes it very clear how businesses need to focus on their cash flow and their activities. Another great one from Dylan from Shear, and he's up in Brisbane, Australia. Great podcast from a great business mind. Thanks, Dylan. Um, Rhonda Lynn turned my business around and her podcast, Financial Foreplay, is full of great information that can help your business too. Another great one from Craig Alexander Rattre. So somebody from overseas here, good to hear that we've got people um, outside of Australia listening to the podcast. Fantastic podcast on a subject matter close to my heart. I found myself nodding throughout and agreeing with most of the content. It created lots of great tips and advice for any business owner and many things that seem to be misunderstood and misinterpreted by business owners and worryingly many of their advisors. Mark Kaleja up in Sydney, um, for a startup podcast, the guests and messages are great and it follows the theme of the book, Financial Foreplay. This has got legs and should go a long way. Another one from Cassandra Varian, also of Brisbane. Rhonda Lynn knows her stuff and she helped me with my business turning it from at risk to profitable. We also worked our way through a pandemic with her help. Uh, highly recommended. Thank you, Cassandra. So I just wanted to like do a quick shout out because I, d I just want to make sure that everybody knows that I am so highly appreciative of the emails that I've gotten, of your feedback, of any reviews, and also you guys sharing it with people, whether they be colleagues or maybe just friends and family that you think can really benefit from having an approach to finances that is going to empower people to make better decisions. So let's get straight stuck into the cash flow stuff because we've got a lot that I want to cover today, but I just wanted to start off by um, giving an overview of kind of where we're at with this whole cash flow thing. And the best way that I can do it, and I'm going to be doing something I don't normally do, and I'm going to be inserting um, in the show notes some great visuals. So Oftentimes, uh, because podcasting is largely an audio f uh, medium, you guys don't get to see the benefit of some of the visuals that I have and that I use to explain this stuff. So if you happen to be watching via a medium like Amazon or uh, perhaps Podchaser or uh, Podbean, all you have to do is click on the show notes and I'm going to insert some stuff. So you'll be able to kind of follow along if you want to see any of those slides or visuals. So first and foremost, the most important thing about cash flow is it's heaps easier and much more straightforward than most of you um, are led to imagine. There's a really an easy way and a hard way to explain cash flow. And unfortunately, sometimes too many people take the hard way and that puts you at a disadvantage because it gives you the impression that this stuff is a lot more complex than it really is. The easiest way that I know how to explain cash flow is this. Cash flow is a little bit like a circle. Money flows in, and then money flows out. But it just keeps going round and round in your business. And if you really wanted to think about what cash flow is in a nutshell, it comes down to something as simple as this. If you were to take a look at your beginning bank balance this month, and then at the end of the month, take a look at what it was, your cash flow is just the amount that it went up or down by. That's not tough, is it? You know, if you think about it, it's just the same thing. And that, that could be true of your personal bank account or your business. So basically, if you want to know what your cash flow is for the financial year of your business, and let's just say that your business starts on July the 1st, and it flows through to December the 31st, the cash flow is just the amount that the bank account went up or down by in that entire period. Now, 
this kind of should help to simplify things a little bit because cash flow is actually not that tough. And here's the thing. One of the things I want you to remember, and I'm going to be explaining this a little bit more as we go through this episode today together, is that cash flow is 100% certain. I want you to write that down. There is no ambiguity, no doubt. It's a certainty. Some of the other stuff that we're going to talk about in a minute isn't as certain. But what I hear and I get so frustrated with in the industry is so many people mixing up these these terms. Sometimes people associate cash flow forecasting or estimating um, some of that stuff with cash flow. And they use the words interchangeably, but they all mean something slightly different. But here's the thing. Cash flow is 100% certainty. There is no tricky math. It either You either have cash flow or you don't have cash flow for a period. There's nothing ambiguous about it. Now, if you can calculate it correctly, you're going to know how much went into your business during the period of time and how much went out. And here's the important part and where cash got trapped, right? So sometimes cash leaves your business and when it's gone, it's gone. You can never get it back. But if cash is trapped in your business, you need to know where it's trapped because you need to know where you need to spend your time figuring out how to unlock it and put it in your bank account, right? So it's really important that... I teach you in a simple way how to figure out cash flow so that you can know how much went in, how much went out, and how much is trapped so that you can fix it, right? And it doesn't make sense to waste a whole lot of time on forecasting. Now, I'm going to have a bit of a, there's probably going to be a few advisors out there that are going to be listening to this. They're going to be, you know, the hair on their back is going to be pricking up right now. But here's the thing. I do not want you as small business clients or customers to spend a lot of time on forecasting because it's just a best guess about where things are going to be at the future, right? And if you rely solely on a forecast or you spend too much time forecasting, guess what? You're going to waste your time. You're going to miss stuff that's really critical because guess what? Most small businesses are not experts in calculating cash flow. So my best guess is if I came in and took a look at what you're doing, you'd be doing it wrong. You'd be missing some stuff that's really critical. And most importantly, you're not going to have enough time left after you've wasted time doing the forecasting to fix the problems. So what I want to do is I want to give you a little bit of an example because I want you to be able to know with 100% certainty, what is the difference between all these terms that we're going to talk about? And I want you to have a very clear picture in your mind so that no one can ever fool you into thinking that these things are interchangeable and that they mean the same thing. So I never want you ever to confuse cash flow with profit, right? Your cash balance or even an estimate of your cash position in the future. These are all different things. There's profit, there's cash in your bank account, there's cash flow, and then there's a forecast or an estimate. These are all different things. Now, cash and profit are components of cash flow, but they're not the whole picture. And if you only look at some of these things like profit or cash and isolation, you're going to be missing about 60 or 70% of the whole picture of what cash flow really is. So I want to take you through these things quickly, but I want to do it in a way that's going to be easy for you to remember. Now, first of all, cash flow, as I just said, tracks the movement of cash through your business as it operates. The most important thing that you need to remember is it 100% certain, right? It's the net difference between the inflows and the outflows in your bank account over a period of time. Now, let's take a look at this cash floor forecasting thing or cash position estimate, right? They are best guesses about what's going to happen in your business or even in your personal financials. Let's just say that you are using a spreadsheet or some sort of app to do it. Guess what? They are usually not complete enough to forecast cash flow with a high degree of accuracy. They merely forecast your cash position at some future date, which is not the same thing as your cash flow, right? These forecasts are not objective. And oftentimes they're not even fully complete. They just, they rarely can help you pinpoint the best places to unlock cash quickly. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to to focus your time or spend time doing forecasting because it's just a best guess. If you rely solely on a forecast, you know, I promise you, you're going to be wasting your time and making huge mistakes. Now, some of you might be thinking, you know, what's she talking about? She's basically said to us that, you know, we shouldn't be doing forecasting. I'm now hearing that the cash that's in my bank account, that's not cash flow either. And, you know, Rondolin's also said that profit isn't the same thing as cash flow. Now, you're probably thinking, 
geez, you know, it feels a little bit muddled in my head. Now, I want to give you an example. I want to give you an example through words that's going to be highly visual. And I think most of you are going to be able to relate to what I'm about to say. So what I want you to do, just to make this crystal clear in your mind, is just for the sake of the next few minutes, I want you to just to imagine that you were a farmer, right? Now, some of you may have never farmed in your life, but I'm still sure you're going to be able to follow this analogy. I want you to imagine that you're a farmer and the land that you are farming on is in a drought which is not that hard to imagine for those of you that are listening that are in Australia, because we've been in a a drought here for many years in, uh, you know, key farming corridors. Now, I want you to imagine that hasn't rained in weeks, maybe even months, and you're starting to get really worried as the farmer, right, because you make money from your crops, that you might lose your entire crop, the whole thing's going to be wiped out. Now, I have a really important question for you. Is it more valuable for you, the farmer, to know where there is a well, an underground well on your land and how much water is in that well so you can bring it up to the surface and irrigate your crops, or that there is no rain in the rain gauge outside your kitchen window, or that the farmer's almanac says that it's going to rain 20 centimeters sometime this month? Now, This isn't a rhetorical question because the answer to this question that I just asked you should be pretty bloody obvious, right? From this point forward, I want you to remember that cash flow should never be confused with your profit, your cash in the bank, or an estimate of your cash position, right? Cash flow, as I said, is a certainty. It's kind of like the holy grail. And if you calculate it correctly, it's going to show you exactly where you need to focus your mind to unlock the money that's trapped and put it up in your bank account, right? It's exactly like the analogy that I've just given you as a farmer about finding and tapping into this massive underground well that's sitting on your land, but you can't see and bringing, you know, measuring how much water is in there and bringing it up to the surface somehow to irrigate your crops. That is cash flow. That is a hundred percent certainty. If that well is there and if it's full of water, it's a hundred percent certain. Cash flow is just about finding, measuring, and tapping into that well. Whereas cash, you know, cash in your bank account is kind of the equivalent of looking outside your kitchen window to see how much water you've got, you know, on the ground or in the rain gauge that you're using to measure, right? Now, if there isn't any much, you know, a lot of water in your rain gauge, guess what? There's a drought then it's not very helpful to you. You can see that there's a drought. You can see that there's no water, but it doesn't give you any answers. That's why your bank account is not very helpful in explaining what's going on in isolation with your cash flow. And cash position estimate is kind of like trying to consult the farmer's almanac to predict when it, when and where it might rain. You know, great, some person or perhaps trends over time have been tracked But it doesn't mean it's going to happen for sure, does it? You know, if the farmer's almanac is wrong, you can't, you know, go out and sue them and say, hey, you know, there was no rain and I was counting on this. There's no certainty in it. It's just someone's best guess trying to help you out a little bit, but it's not a certainty. The best solution is always going to be find the water, i.e., your cash reserves. Find out, you know, where cash came in and where cash went out, where's its track. Quantify how much is there, right? Measure the cash flow. And then use proven and tested strategies to unlock that money, to unlock that cash and put it in your bank account. That is always going to be by far your best bet. So I hope, um, I hope this analogy helps you a little bit. It's, you know, it's a visual way to me of just really understanding that there are fundamental differences between all of these types of terminology. And a lot of times I see people confusing them. And hopefully, all you need to do now is think about them in terms of this farming analogy that I've given you, and you should never confuse these terms again. We're always going to be focusing when you're working with me on cash flow, because I don't care what might happen. I care what did happen, and I also want to know where the cash is trapped in your business so that I can help you to use powerful, proven strategies that are going to help you unlock it and put it in your bank account and also prevent cash from unnecessarily leaving your bank account too soon or in ways that are not helpful or productive or effective for your business.
Now, the next thing that I want to do, so I often use this um, analogy, I guess, when I'm speaking and stuff, but I also want to introduce you to two uh, two characters, right? Because some of you may or may not have actually read my book, Financial Foreplay, which was first published in two, way back in 2009. Um, but these two, um, this next analogy or metaphor that I want to share with you is really, really powerful because, again, it's a highly visual one. And it's also very, very simple. So one of the things I do differently and why I call it financial foreplay is I don't find it actually productive or empowering to try to teach people how to calculate in numbers cash flow. And the reason that I don't do it is by and large, it takes a a heck of a long time, to be honest with you, to master the art of calculating cash flow. It's one of the reasons why people make a lot of mistakes when they try to do it themselves is things can easily get, um, you know, the numbers can get turned around, things can get lost or forgotten or not taken into account. But here's the thing. How I want to teach it to you is in a way that um, is highly visual and using this story, and I'm hoping that it's going to make it easier for you to make good decisions about your cash flow. So here's the thing. The most common assumption, I think, that happens in, with a lot of businesses, and so for those of you that have read chapter one of Financial Foreplay, this is going to make a heck of a lot of sense, is that if you're running this business and the price that you charge is greater than the amount it costs you to either buy those products or services or make them, there's an assumption that everything's going to be okay, right? That you're going to be profitable, you're going to be successful, and, you know, Bob's your uncle, it's wonderful. But here's the thing. Profit isn't really a real thing. It's an accounting construct. It's like a bag of buttons. You cannot take profit to a bank and deposit it and then expect to do anything with that. The bank would laugh at you. Profit is just an accounting term that is used to calculate how much revenue you have left after you have subtracted all the costs that went into your business. But it's not cash flow and it's not enough on its own. To be a sustainable business, to be successful, you have to have healthy cash flow. Now, here's the thing. Every business has two young employees. Now, you never see these two, right? They're fictional characters, but they're as important as any other people that exist in your business right now. The first is a young woman, and we're going to call her Penny, right? And as you might expect from her name, Penny gets her energy from spending, right? So this shouldn't be too hard for uh, anybody to imagine, right? The second is a young man. Now we're going to call him Ernest. And guess what? As you might expect, he gets his energy from earning cash, right? Now, as the business cash registers in your, you know, either online, offline business, as they are ticking away and your bank account is going up and down, guess what? Ernest's stamina increases, right? Because as long as you're earning money, his ability to run and his stamina increases. Now, Penny and Ernest are good and reliable employees, but guess what? You can be sure that they will be with you for life or for the life of your business. But here's the thing. You don't have to pay them because they're imaginary creatures, right? They're creatures that we've constructed together. However, they like to do something that most couples do. They play a bit of a cat and mouse game because they are constantly courting and chasing each other. And they love playing this sort of come chase me type of game. So I want you to bear with me as this, as I explain this a little bit further. Before your business opened, guess what? Penny, in your business, she was powered by all those startup expenses, right? You had to spend a lot of money to before you ever opened the doors and started trading and selling to anyone. Perhaps you had leasehold improvements. Perhaps you had to spend money creating a logo. Perhaps you had to buy stuff um, to either sell or set up your business. You know, there may be a ton of expenses that you incurred. Guess what? Penny ran, right? The more money that you spent, the further that she ran. Now, Penny beckons playfully to her partner, Ernest, because she wants him to chase her. But guess what? He wants to run and play. He wants to chase her just like any couple would, but he can't. He can't run in your business until your business starts bringing in some money. Now, only after you've turned on the lights, you know, you've 
fired up your coffee machine, you've connected to the internet, you can sell online, however your business runs. Ernest needs a little bit to get going, doesn't he? All he wants to do is to run and catch Penny. But the, this is the problem. And it's the problem in any relationship, whether that be, you know, same sex or heterosexual, it doesn't matter, is that in order for Penny to be caught by Ernest, you've got to earn money in your business. Now, let's figure out how this might play itself out. The important thing to realize about all of this is that Penny and Ernest both get energy from a different thing, from spending and earnest, or sorry, and earning. So I, I even, uh, I've even started calling earning earnest myself. Now, here's the thing. You only get, they only get an energy boost. They're only able to run in your business when money physically comes in or leaves your business, right? So here, I want you to think about this. This has to happen in the form of a cash or bank transfer, an incentive or rebate or something. Penny and Ernest do not get energy and they do not run in your business from credit related transactions until the transactions are settled. So it's a little bit like thinking like your business is a purely cash run business, right? So Penny doesn't get energy or she doesn't get a boost. She doesn't get to run when you buy some something for your business. You might buy, uh, maybe you sell shoes or perhaps you um, create services and you're busy, you know, creating something for a client. Penny doesn't get to run if you give someone 14 or 30 days to pay, right? Or, you know, and, and I'm talking about your suppliers, not your customers. So if you're out there buying shoes or creating um, stuff and those supplies are being banked up in your business as a credit, as an account, guess what? Penny's not running yet. She's only storing up energy and getting ready to run. And it's a very similar thing for Ernest, right? Ernest doesn't get momentum if you give your customers time to pay, right? So if you've got customers that you, perhaps you let them get away without paying you for 30, 60, or 90 days, guess what? Ernest cannot run. Ernest cannot catch Penny. The power only comes to him when your customer settles up and actually pays the bills. So here's the thing. Penny and Ernest are only affected by things called cash, right? You know, a lot of people talk about this thing called accrual accounting. It is cruel. I'll give, I'll give you that because here's the thing. Accrual accounting has nothing to do with cash. And that's where people get messed up. A lot of people complete their books in their company on this thing called accrual accounting. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit more in a, um, in a moment what that all means. But Penny and Ernest have nothing to do with accrual accounting. They are purely cash-driven creatures. Penny runs when you spend money. Money leaves your bank account. And Ernest can only chase her when money actually comes in, right? So I want you to think about it this way. And this is really important. If in your business, you were to take a look at your profit and loss in your balance sheet, guess what? What you would likely see is a complete summary of this. All the money that was collected and ever will be collected in the future, even though there's no certainty about the timings of those collections. And you're also going to see all the money that was spent for real but all the money that will be spent in the future, even though there's no certainty about the timing is of those outgoings. Now, can you see why your financial statements are super duper confusing to you? Because they include a whole bunch of stuff that's going to happen in the future, but you don't have any certainty about when exactly that stuff's going to happen. And that's why it's really, really difficult to run your business off of this type of stuff, because there is too much ambiguity. There is too much that may or may not happen, and, and it's not safe. It's not certain. And so financial statements are many way, in many ways like a running total of everything that has happened and a lot of stuff that has yet to happen but might happen at some point in the future, but you don't know. 
And that's why this stuff is confusing. And I promise that I'm also going to share with you um, in the show notes a couple of little visuals that I like to use just so that it can really um, show you the difference. And now here's the thing that's really important about this. Cash flow, as we talked about, is a certainty, right? It's a totally different beast. There's no ambiguity. Either the money went in or was spent or it was collected or it wasn't. So here's the thing. If you took a look at your business and you only viewed it on a purely cash flow basis, cash flow really comes down to this. If Penny, the person who spends money in your business, has run way farther So maybe Penny's spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and she has ran and ran and ran in your business and Ernest hasn't ran at all, or maybe Ernest only ran $50,000 worth of money in your business. The difference between how far Penny ran and the difference between how far Ernest has ran basically gives you your cash flow. If Penny is way out in front of Ernest, guess what? You have a negative cash flow. It's as simple as that. So what that means is that maybe your bank balance started at 100 this month. Maybe it's now at 25. You know that Penny outran Ernest, right? Because she must have run $75 farther than Ernest because your bank balance went down. It's as simple as that. So the aim of cash flow, the aim of you running your business basically purely comes down to this. Every month or on a year-to-date basis, what you need to strive for, what you need to aim for and measure and ensure is happening is that you want to try to always have earnest, the person who is earning the money in your business, running further and faster than Penny. It's as simple as that. And I think that I'm hoping that um, seeing a few of these visuals in the show notes and listening to me, maybe you need to listen to this episode again and replay it back and really think about what I've said. Please, for those of you that, you know, are trying to run your business or even your personal finances off of a bunch of bank statements or financial statements, I want you to stop doing it because I think that it will confuse you and make it much harder for you to really focus on cash flow because it's going to contain or those statements are going to contain a whole bunch of information that is still too uncertain. You don't know when and how much is going to transpire at at future dates. But what we do know is about cash flow. So what we're going to be talking about whenever we come back and we talk about cash flow, especially in our time together, I'm going to be using things like my farming analogy. I'm going to be talking to you guys about Penny and Ernest because I think that rather than teaching you how to calculate this stuff in a numerical sense. If we can always focus back and talk about Penny and Ernest, I think that it's going to always be easier for you to fundamentally see, for you to fundamentally understand and to use in your business this concept of, okay, let's take a look at what happened. You know, you spent a lot of money and Penny has run $100,000 with your business. Now, where is Ernest? Has he run more than Penny? Has he run less than Penny? And that's all that we're basically doing because we just want to figure out how do we accelerate Ernest's running? How do we get him to run further and faster than Penny at any given time? And that's basically the whole concept of cash flow in your business. Now, these are interesting times, right? We're living in times where cash is tight. You know, many people are coming out of the pandemic. Um, The responses globally in different countries to shutting businesses down and uh, trying to stop the spread of this disease has impacted businesses and, and people's personal finances in a fundamental way. But guess what? Cash flow, you know, doesn't lie. Either you have it or you don't. And the aim of what we need to be striving for right now is figuring out ways that we can get earnest to run either faster, harder, longer than Penny in any given situation. So let's just say we're talking about about a a business, right? We want to figure out ways that we can bring the collection of cash forward. Can we change the terms on which we give our customers to pay us? Can Can we reduce those? Can we find ways to get paid up front? You know, perhaps we do, um, we have a large sale. 
That could be for a product or a service. Maybe there are ways to spread those payments out over time that can help you with your cash flow. Maybe there are ways for you to get paid on a monthly recurring basis, like a subscription of some sort, rather than waiting until the end of the year to get paid in a lump sum for work that has been done over a 12-month period. All of those things assist Ernest and help him to run faster and quicker to Chase Penny because we're bringing that cash flow forward, right? The other way that we could be do it is we could be finding new channels for your existing products and services, new ways to take the same stuff that you've always sold to market to find more buyers so that you can bring more cash in and Ernest can run. The other thing that you could be thinking about doing, and we've seen this um, in many different ways globally during the pandemic, is finding new products and new services that you can sell during this time to help accelerate getting Ernest to run. And here's the thing. Regardless of what happened during the pandemic, Penny still ran, didn't she? You know, and that's one of the biggest hurdles that most businesses faced is just because you were asked to lock down or shut down, just because people weren't necessarily able to come to you for those that have physical places of business, doesn't mean that that Penny stopped running, does it? You know, many people still had to pay their rent, although some of them got reduced rent. Many people still had to pay their employees. You still had to pay some utilities. There were still monthly expenses that you paid for perhaps internet or other, you know, types of services that you use in your business. And a lot of those didn't stop because your business was locked down. And here's the thing, on any given um, month or any given yearly period, you've got to cover how much penny runs. And the only way to do that is get is having a single-minded focus on the speed and the dedication and the length which Ernest runs in your business. And so we're going to be focusing on this as we're talking through cash flow. Um, I wanted to make sure that I did a, de- a dedicated episode on it because I do know that there's a lot of misconceptions about cash flow. And I do know that people get confused, they get scared, they get overwhelmed with it. But I want to boil it back down to its very, very basic form, which is just as simple as taking a look at what happened in your business and figuring out how much did Penny run, how much did Ernest run, and is he or is he not ahead of her? Is he in front of her? As long as Penny, uh, Ernest is outrunning Penny, you know that you've got positive cash flow and you're heading in the right direction. So I want to leave you guys there with that. I think we've done a lot of great work today in this episode. This is, you know, a really tough area for a lot of people understanding cash flow. But let's boil it down to the basic principles as we move forward and work together through some of the next thing that we're going to be covering, because we're going to be talking about some really interesting topics over the next few weeks together. I'm going to be bringing it back to Penny and Ernest. I'm going to be mentioning Penny and Ernest throughout so that you guys can reinforce your understanding. And I want to make it easier for you to get a quick handle on whether personally or in your business, you are heading in the right direction with positive cash flow. So great work, everybody. And I look forward to our next chat together. Take care, everyone. Okay.